Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. That is Joe Bryant. I am Vin Stone. Everyone watching us home, watching us home. How about watching us live at home? You know what? You can <laughs> yes. be watching us at home. You know what? I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You don't have to be watching us live at home. You can be watching us incorporally at home. I don't know, <laughs> incorporally. After the fact. Whatever, <laughs> however you want to roll. As long as you're watching, maybe you're listening after the fact. How's everybody doing? It's middle of the week. Bunch of fun things have happened. Things have gone on. Julie joined us last night with a track mania. Getting pretty good, man. Oh, thank you, Ben. Yeah, I've been been practicing a lot. So yeah, the 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 tracks yesterday were really fun. I love it when there's tracks with lots of loops and wall rides. <laughs> I actually really like those. And I'm happy because I won a map on Friday. Yay! Right? <laughs> yeah. I am Think getting better. <laughs> It's amazing. It's like we've been at this for like 37 weeks. If you're unfamiliar, we've got like a little uh -huh. project going on where we all just kind of started at one spot. And we're like, well, let's, uh, let's try to have some fun. And let's do it with a little bit of puzzles and um, racing, which it turned out good combination. Trackmania 2, it's super cheap. It runs on anything. And we get together two times a week and we just practice and just, yeah. yeah. Uh, you hear screaming and, you know, not like, ah, rage screaming of like, why, oh, why? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to figure out things. It's a fun time. Everybody's welcome to join and hang out with us if you want to see that. Uh, we'll be back doing that Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. couple of things. I was talking in the pre-show. Monday was arts and crafts at my house. Admittedly, <laughs> arts and crafts at my house might look a little bit different from yours. Yeah, I saw your tweet, Ven. Here it is. <laughs> That's what I was working on. Now, the difficulty, if you keep track of me, you like audio cables. There's nothing Cat5 can't fix. But, you know, I got the supplies in, too. Look at that. That that looks all professionally made and stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, you did a good job. So I put that together. If there is a signal going through something, I can probably find a way to adapt it. So that is the blue thing, which uses post adapters on the back, which is probably one of the reasons I got it so cheap, because I'm sure Jim at Guitar Center looked at that XLR connector on the left, and he's like, there's not one on the right. You can't possibly use this. It's probably broken. Oh. Huh. Not the case. Not the case. You use the post connectors for the in and out, which, you know, is high, low, and ground on both sides. So I just wired that okay. into some XLR barrels. Back in the rack, taking care of snake jazz. I was happy to see that. And, uh, yeah, the reason that took all day, because I made pass one with a lot of things. I made the a minimal viable product like this is this functions but it looked gnarly and there was like wires egging out i'm like yeah so i went back a couple of times and refined it but that was kind of fun i got that out of the way i'm gonna do a little video on that a fun little video i got a couple of fun little videos for like reaper kind of set up um uh, you know one for just like basic dsing how does this vintage piece of hardware work it's 40 year old thing work against the modern plugin for dsing i got another thing for reaper for people who are doing like live streams and podcasts, how to balance all your audio out automatically. If you don't have things like Apex compellers in your chain, that's going to be kind of interesting. Another one on control surfaces for Odor and Reaper, how to make these little boxes over here. You can move faders around from your PC, which is fun. Let's face it. That's like the coolest part about it. I can take my mouse and make things move over here. It's kind of neat. neat. <laughs> now, Tomorrow night, we're going to be going into Area 3 uh -huh. and back for Brad. This is something Jordan and I started a couple of weeks ago. It's open. If you want to come and do it, you got to be smarter than a bot. That's it. We are going to go through all of Back for Blood. And we're doing it every Thursday at 7.30. You can come join us. You don't need a camera. All you need is a microphone. Add reply me in Discord sometime before 7.30 tomorrow night, and you can hop in, and you can come play with us. It's uh, it's challenging. Maybe if you like the original Left 4 Dead, this will be your gem. Or if you've been around for a long, long time, we've been doing, uh, we did Left 4 Brad. Uh, it took us like over a year to beat it. So this yeah, is going to be an fun to watch. <laughs> going project. Uh, and Fox Dog was good enough to join us a uh, week before last. He had a chance. And that was always fun running around and doing all that stuff. And of course, Friday we'll be back with Trackmania 
So come check that out. Might mm-hmm. be a thing. Now, Jill, I got very excited earlier this week. Yeah, this is an exciting project. I did. I <laughs> did. And it's not every day you get to see a new cross-platform browser project in the works. Yeah. Ladybird. From the creator of Serenity OS, a nice little post about how the browser has been born. And I said, you know, browsers are hard, man. But then again, (laughs) this guy's already written an operating system. Might be the right guy for the job. Maybe a browser would even be easy for him. Um, He brings up a couple of things, though. Like, hey, you know, there's no JavaScript JIT compiler just yet. They're using traditional AST interpreter. It's going to be replaced by bytecode VM. It already gets 100% on the acid test. That's a good first start. And there's some Q&A in this. All the links are going to be in the show notes. But he has a good Q&A thing. And he's like, why would you even bother? You can't make a new browser engine without billions of dollars. And hundreds of staff has replied to this. Sure you can. Don't listen to armchair defeatist who never worked on a browser. I already am a huge fan of that reply. I tried it out on our web zone. It's it's a little bit of a fire, but I didn't expect too much. However, Mm -hmm. I tried it on Slashdot. Oh, okay. Yeah, that hopefully should work. (laughs) Crashed right to the desktop. Aww. And uh, (laughs) most importantly, ZomboCom didn't load. However, browsers are hard. Hacker News worked, and you can take a look, you know, just like Reddit pulls up. The, the reason I'm excited about this, like, we always talk about we need player three in the GPU market, don't we? Yeah, we absolutely. Do. We need player three in the browser wars. We absolutely do. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's a whole Q&A section through here you know, if you find websites. Yeah, and let's be very <laughs> clear. At this point, there are way more websites that don't work. And they're not really at the point where like reporting individual sites makes sense. But a lot of work is going into this. and. I want, I would like an option between, because you have Chromium base, which is going to be your Microsoft Edge, your Googles, and Braves and everything else, and you have Firefox. And you know what? Some, rightfully so, some people are not happy with either option currently. And yeah. to see some innovation moving into this um, makes me very excited. How about you? Yeah, Absolutely. Well, I was also impressed that, you know, he's only been working on Serenity OS four years, and he just started working on Ladybird in on July 4th. I mean, it's pretty incredible with how far it's come, you know, in, in so little time. And it's just, yeah, like Vince said, it's so exciting to see a new browser being built from the ground up. So we have some competition in the space, and um, it's really Awesome, because you can support the project on GitHub sponsors, on Patreon or PayPal. And if you're interested in working on Ladybird or Library Web, Library JS, or any part of the supporting stack, you can find it on the Serenity OS Discord. And they have a nice Discord. I just joined. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this project brings to the table as it gets more fleshed out. And um, in the article, the developer talked about how, um, you know, it's, it's probably going to take a couple years before it's really in, in a good place for, for um, wide use. But it's a start. It is, and I believe it's early enough for me to show up and go, hear me out. Mm-hmm. Jack's supporting the browser. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea, Ben. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't have it, to what you said, Jill. It, it will be a long, a long time. Maybe not as long as we're predicting, but it's going to be a minute yeah. before we're going to see something like, you know, full, like Jitsi is going to work in it. But uh, just refreshing, exciting to see something like this, especially when it's being done by somebody you're like this guy can do this yeah like, yeah it's really you know this impressive. isn't this isn't an idea guy he's like i have these great ideas and like so you want everybody else to do it for you yes and like well, well good luck with that so another thing made me excited audacity mm-hmm. man everyone mm-hmm. uh who was it muse came in bought audacity everyone was so excited about that that was the best thing ever and uh 
the internet was like super positive, no complaints, you know, like Muso and Audacity now, nothing bad to happen. None of what I just said was true. The internet lost its collective mind, screamed, and to this day I have to answer questions about data collection, which is something you gotta opt into. And what is the data? It's like the it's the equivalent of gnome telemetry that we talked about last week. Yeah. Not defending it. I'm just telling you what it is versus what it is not. New version of Audacity on got my attention. Why? The screenshot I'm showing you right now has an option on the left hand side of it that says real time effects. What? An audacity? Yes. Woohoo. You can do it. <laughs> it exists. They've added a new effects button for the tracks menu, which lets you load your VST3 plugins, LV2, LS, um, Ladspa, which Lad no one Spa. uses. It exists. Yeah. However, and I have it pulled up right now, which is like noise repellent. There's no GUI. Every time I try to load uh, anything with a GUI, straight crash to desktop every time. And, um, you know, there's been some FFmpeg um, AV format 59s now supported on Linux. Audacity can now be compiled without Jack. I don't know uh, why that, well, I would understand because Jack, Jack implementation in Audacity is poor. Mm. And they've switched Mad MPEG 123 mm. to MPEG 123 and MP3 importer. But, yeah, having the real-time effects is kind of important because this is, this is that life that I live over here in the dog. Because uh, you can do non de non destructive editing and testing. You know, I don't have to print the effects every time. And traditionally in Audacity, you know, you get a highlight, then you apply the effect. And if you don't like the effect, what do you got to do? Undo. Undo it. Yeah. Then like maybe change your settings and all that. Being able to have that real time effects means you can adjust the. You can just click play and start working on it until you get it where you want it. Then you can print the effect when you go to export it like a normal dog, which is great. However, it is super crashy. There's an app image. Joe, you've had some problems getting the app image open. Yeah, yeah, I had a lot of errors. It did launch, and mm. I really did like the, the interface. I think they've organized it really well. I think that that's a plus. It, it, it is looking better, so that's really good. And I'm actually looking forward to playing with some of the real-time effects. It would be interesting, then, if it, if it was real-time effects where you have no effects and then you can just turn turn an effect on while you're recording instantaneously and then turn it off you should be able to do that that would be cool i think yeah. there's a power button next to it. i mean it's something you can do yeah okay cool like i do because i've used some of those uh effects on synthesizers and music instruments uh, software versions yeah, typically anytime that you can be bringing in um, VST, VST3, um, LV2 effects and like that, that, they're all going to have the ability to enable or disable the effect time. in effect time. Yeah. Yeah. So that cool. is something you absolutely will be able to play with, but just be careful because you might be looking at your desktop when you do. Now, <laughs> you lot at Audacity or Muse, whoever owns it, I'm not 100% on that. You'll need to fix that build system because... <laughs> I did the app image. I loaded the app image and like it kept crashing. What do I do? The responsible thing. I'm like, off to GitHub we go. Let's look mm. at the build instructions. Man, these are kind of scattered up crazy. Like, you know what? Fine. I would use the word kludge, but I think I'd be just a little too nice because in my world, <laughs> Conan, if you know, you know. You see that and you're like, this is going to be an adventure. Conan. <laughs> <laughs> not the barbarian, not the talk show host. No, no, no. I'm talking about the thing that likes to break every few months. And when it's taking mm -hmm. a break from breaking, it's generating obscure error messages that you can do nothing with. That Conan. I tried. I ran through it, you know, and it's like step one, pip install Conan. Sad face. Like, oh, this isn't going to end up working. Nor did it. So, yeah. Friendly unsolicited advice. Clean up that build system. Make it something logical. Like that, I don't, I don't understand. Like that works mm. for somebody good for them. But outside of that, um, system 76. Now mm -hmm. this, this is, uh, this is, this is my fault because I wish this into existence. A couple yes. Of months ago. <laughs> yes, you did, Ben. So last Friday, system 76 tweeted that the Thelio Mega is out and 
that it is the world's smallest quad GPU deep learning workstation. And it has so many unique and awesome things uh, about this machine. Um, there are so many unique and awesome things. One is that the Thelio Mega's thermals and cooling are actually divided into two separate systems. And the unique airflow keeps heat generated by the CPU and GPU from mixing and preventing throttling. So that it, that's just very impressive. There are <clears throat> last few inter iterations of the uh, Thelio, Thelio um, has had really awesome uh, cooling solutions. And there's just so many awesome things about this computer. It's got a Threadripper Pro 5000 WX series processor, an ASUS Pro WS WRX 80E Sage motherboard, up to 256 gig gigabyte of ECC memory, PCI 4.0 NVMe storage, up to four NVIDIA A-Series or AMD Radeon Pro GPUs. Yes, I said four <laughs> GPUs. <laughs> and this all is, it requires a 1600-watt power supply to power all the components. And oh my gosh, I am just nerd, <laughs> nerd raging over this machine. I want this machine. <laughs> This would have been great for, this is great for all the years I've done animation and rendering and, uh, you know, compiling of kernels and, and all, all the, the stuff we need a, a high-end workstation for. And this beautiful handcrafted machine starts at $5,799, which is, you know, on par with, with a lot of the more expensive workstations. And this one is handcrafted in Denver, Colorado, by the fine folks at System76. Yeah, it's made by hippies. Yeah. <laughs> and they have great customer support, and you, you get all the bells and, and whistles of, of a company that's really passionate about their computers. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's a thing of beauty. And it's small, too. <laughs> I was impressed by that. How small it is. <laughs> so for my brothers and sisters out there, you're thinking about Threadripper Pro, and you're like, is that like regular Threadripper? Yeah, it's like the last gen Threadripper that AMD didn't cancel after one generation, so you're stuck with that. So it's the thing you got to buy next right now. And you're like, lovely. Very excited about that. But mm -hmm. unlike your regular ordinary vanilla Threadripper with those measly 64 PCI Express lanes, Threadripper Pro brings you the full 128 goodness that is typically found in Epic server class CPUs. Now, nice. I read over this at System76, they believe in 24, 32, and 64 core options. No 12 core option because, you know what, I'm going to throw AMD under the bus on this one. That 3945WX is hidden from everyone but Lenovo. Lenovo is the one company that's like, we have the 12 core option. It, it's just not available in retail channels. I couldn't find it. However, there's also no 16 core option, which I thought was kind of curious. Hmm. You know, um, yeah, it is PCI Express Gen 4, dual 10 gig Ethernet, four dual slot GPUs, because that's the type of person who has no idea what they're doing. They're like, you know, you need to buy some quadros for that, right? And you're like, dual slot, look, I got four there, you guys. I'm like, oh, little buddy, that's cute. So I do have some questions about this, though, because I actually had to uh, talk to a System76 employee because they did bring up four GPUs in this. I'm like, all right, all right. That I had to go double look at the uh, animation. And the animation only shows four PCI Express slots because I'm assuming this is a reused animation from your standard Threadripper, which has four by 16s. Well, you know, two by 16s, two by 8s. And I was very curious about that because... They make Threadripper Pros. I'm also looking at you, Lenovo, with only five slots, which sounds ridiculous because typically you get six to seven on a Threadripper mm. Pro, same as you would get on an Epic Motherboard. I'd consider updating that animation because at a glance, when I looked at that, I was like, oh man, this is like Lenovo, where you only get like, th you know, effectively two usable slots. Even though you got four, you know, you do like one GPU, then you got, you can squeeze something in and you got one more left in there. 
Mm-hmm. So maybe update and put like big blinking red text or something like, no, 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 everything's there. And you don't have to worry about it. Because I was told, you know, you do get seven PCI Express slots, 4.0 by 16. That's good. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. However, I had to think about it. Because, you know, people in my camp, like actual production boxes. Now there's two, there's two camps. There's the, I want the bragging rights. I want the YOLO machine. I want all the cores. And I got all this stuff. I'm like, what are you using it for? Uh, VMs. And you're like, what? Oh, what's your workload? Shut <laughs> up. I want, and like, just, just say you want it because it's cool. I'm down with that. I support you just as much as I support people like myself who have legitimate workloads. And we know exactly what we need. And typically in production, in, um, especially with like live production, video production, and stuff like that, what we need is the minimum amount of CPU or the maximum amount of PCI Express lanes because we got a lot of peripherals. Peripherals, yeah. <laughs> stuff that you don't even know exists yeah. <laughs> are just required. Like, I, I look at, what do I have in the Red Rubber right now? You know, I do have a daily driver GPU. That's a balanced one. It's got to have compute, but it's also got to be able to run a monitor. So, and I have a quad 4K capture card. That's a requirement. I also have a fiber card for 10 gig because 10 gig over copper is, you know, something, it's a bragging right thing. It's not practical in a work environment because mm-hmm, nobody mm-hmm. has 10 gig copper infrastructure. That's silly. And um, what I'd like to do, you know, even with my little 3016 here, which again, I got that for the memory. I'd like to throw in some extra compute. You know, I'd like to drop it like an A4000, but I'm out of PCI Express slots. Threadripper Pro is going to fix that. You can have those extra slots so you can drop in that little extra bit of compute. I put one together. So I was at about like 6,700 bucks for a 24 core, 32 gigs of RAM, A4000. That's not unreasonable. But it's, here's the difference between the Threadripper Pro and this is the problem AMD created regular Threadripper. Threadripper was enthusiast priced. It was the, you know what? I'm going to buy myself a $1,200 computer or a $1,400 computer. AMD has put Threadripper Pro pricing very much at the high, high end of prosumer, almost business only. The good old days of like, you start seeing that about six grand. You start thinking about Epic, which is where I found myself building a production box. Like, $6,000, $6,000, I can, uh, I might as well just go Epic for that because then I don't have to deal with all the extra stuff that I don't need, you know, the audio and Wi Fi and <laughs> get rid of that. But that's a fair price for a Threadripper Pro. It's mm-hmm. just, you got to keep in mind the Threadripper Pros are expensive. So, yeah. and we've kind of been cut out of the market. You know, there wasn't, apparently, there wasn't a ton of us. That's why, you know, AMD. Did the financials on that, like regular Threadripper customer base? Like, because you, know, you remember once Threadripper launched, they they desperately tried to sell it to gamers. Desperately. They had RGB controllers on the motherboard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I have like two different types on the motherboard here. It's laughable. I have a dip switch for LN2 overclocking. Not even joking. I think it's lovely because it is silk screened on the motherboard. It says LN2. I don't even know what it does, but it's there. And, you know, they really tried to push it out and it didn't get a bunch of adopt. What the adoption was, people like me were like, yes, that's semi affordable. Threadripper Pro is a whole different bag, though. Um, I think this is a completely fair price, especially when you factor in support. But together in the States, you don't have to worry about it. You get a decent warranty. I think out of the box, you get a one year warranty, which mm-hmm. is fine. Which mm-hmm. is fine. Um, yeah, good job on that System 76. But I think, because we, we were joking about it, I was like, I might have accidentally wished this into existence. I'd like to see a 12 core option. Yeah. <laughs> I really would, but don't do that for me because the more I look at it and the more I think about it, what makes m- more sense for me, for somebody with an existing Threadripper platform, mm-hmm. is I'm going to be moving to Epic instead of uh, Threadripper Pro. I think that mm-hmm. I need more server stuff than I do workstation-y stuff. But I still think that's a nice product. I do. Oh, definitely. And this is a really good, you know, this is a great machine for 
for the customers of animation houses and uh, big data houses uh, that need uh, high-end machines with four GPUs to crunch some numbers and uh, some pixels. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> This is like, this has been, this is kind of like the Pentium Pro from 1995, but this is the Pentium Pro of the day. This is, it's, this is a Pentium Pro from like 1979. It's brown, man. It looks like an Atari. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. I also would like to see some updated imagery on that too. Um, just for people, unsolicited yeah. advice. When I'm walking through, I want to see what the back plate looks like. And I want to see, I want to be able to look into the motherboard and see how many available slots are there. And I want that like right there on the page. I mean, the marketing people are going to go, they're going to fight you on that. They're like, no, people don't. Yes, we do want to see that. If you're dropping six grand, you know what you want and you want to be able to see it. You don't need to go to an extra page for it. So there, free pro tip mm -hmm. from your friendly neighborhood old man, Vin. Good product. <laughs> go check okay. it out. Once you're done with that, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You can mm -hmm. help us out doing everything we do here, keeping us loud live, independent, commercial free. We're not bugging you to buy any mattresses or anything like that but we will bug you to head over to linuxgamecast.com check out the sport options if you like got some extra coin laying around maybe you want to get some merch we got a store put us all over your face chest and neck just got an <laughs> amazon wish list with blinky thing oh man you're, uh, you're light of rainbow penguin stuffed animal cute led glowing night light wildlife animal soft plush toy decors gift for toddlers kids 12 Aww. is out of stock that one's out of stock ah i just checked yesterday it was in stock Man, it's been a while since I've tested my lung capacity, but I still got it. Um, <laughs> Another rainbow penguin. <laughs> what do you, you got? A mechanical? Uh, yeah, mechanical. What is that? Uh, it's it it's a a, a stand uh, to to show off your keyboard collection, and I have several hundred keyboards, <laughs> so this is a great. It has a uh, slots for three keyboards. It's a a clear um, display for your keyboards. You yeah. should show that to Steve and be like, hey, man, bring me home a hundred of these. Yeah, I actually need about a hundred of them. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I was yeah. thinking it would be fun to, like, every month rotate, you know, put different keyboards on the display and just rotate them around. So when people come in my computer room, they'll, they'll see different They will know uh, and they keyboards. get, like, one step in. They're like, okay, run, man. We got to get yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh just got one of those uh, amazon wish lists i got one for the studio you'll never guess what's on it no idea whatsoever not in a million years <laughs> there might be some epic stuff on there uh, yes there uh, is <laughs> i do want to ask you is there a okay i have a stream deck right yeah I, a stream deck. I don't know if i'm picking it up without breaking something let's find out uh oh i got this one <laughs> you got the little one <laughs> uh, well this is the big one. Oh, okay this is the mm -hmm. 30 what three six nine twelve Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the super big chunk. Ultra it's, big one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I need like three more keys. Oh. So, Elgato, if you're listening, call me. I, I need one with, I don't know, like 30 keys on it, maybe ish. I don't really want this big chunky one. That's what I was getting at. Um, not a, oh, look at, man, I put it on the wrong thing. There we go. Uh, that, see, here's the difference. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Mm. Here's here's the difference. This is a socket SP3, Epic 702 motherboard, 559, right, Joe? Yeah. 559. That's a good Super price. Super micro, budget. Uh, 850. 850. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Pro. Yeah. Ugh, uh. I don't know. I don't know. Best bang for the buck, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go. If, if you can. Uh, you don't have any extra spare change. I completely get share the show. Tell tell your friend. Tell the cat about it. Come hang out with us. We get an IRC. Uh, if you were a Twitch sub, if you're a patron, you get access to our super secret Discord. But that is also linked live to our IRC and Twitch chat for our live shows. So I don't want anyone to feel left out. Come in and talk to us in there. We get a, speaking of Twitch, we get a couple of new uh, uh, Twitch resubs. Yeah, Joe. we got uh, PT Dave eleventh month resub. Eleventh month. Yeah, eleventh month, and we have elevensies. Uh, yeah, elevensies, and we have Nubbin and Katana Steel. They've been around for a long time, so they have. We have lots of months on their subs, and Alex Sipes just gifted us. Nice, thank you for <laughs> for the gift on Twitch, Alex. <laughs> he gifted us a Patreon 
but he's he's a patron. What? what? Give what? us a patron. You're defective this evening. No, you need I need to recharge. Well, it says Alex Sipes gifted X one, <laughs> and I. Not sure if it relates to Patreon or to the Twitch gift. I don't are, know. Uh, are you talking about Skittles? S three one B. Yeah, yeah let's see. that makes more sense. Yeah, he, he gave the gifted cheers. somebody. He gave, gave okay. uh, he gifted somebody a sub. That's what that means. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, duh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. There we go. I, I am a little sleep on the job. And Don has dropped a hundred bits on us. I think yes, that's he okay. has. They're not too toxic. They're not even bad. They're much better than cryptocurrency for the environment. Garen. Oh, a hundred cheer diamonds. Yay! <laughs> now, everyone, we got an update. Arthurin sent this in, one of our beautiful party patrons, and dropped it into our show notes. That's one of the things you can get our show notes earlier in the week. Yeah. Uh, Jill, tell us about it, because oh, I'm always excited. Now, we were talking. Yeah. Raspberry Pi Foundation. Could we just get an update on what's going on? Because, you know, I was thinking maybe, maybe some information on a new Raspberry Pi. That'd be neat. Like, no, yeah. no, no. We worked it all the way back. It's like, can we just get an update of like when Raspberry Pi 4B's uh, 8 gigs and 4 gigs are going to get back into a full. Under a hundred dollars range. Yeah. yeah. Or like just like some theories or something yeah. like that. But until then, you can um, go ahead and update your Pi OS. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, a new version of Raspberry Pi OS has just been released with lots of improvements and features asked for by Raspberry Pi users and us in the Linux community. So what's really cool, uh, one of the cool new features is the main menu plugin on the taskbar has been modified to allow text search. So you just hit the Raspberry Pi key on your keyboard or the Windows or the super key to open the main menu and start ty typing the name of the application that you want to launch. The super key, which one's that? Uh, the the Windows key or on my keyboard it has a text penguin on it. <laughs> it's where the Windows key usually is. Ben, you know that. <laughs> is it next to the any key? It's next to Control and Alt usually. <laughs> That's where you find it. <laughs> next to the any key, yes. So um, also uh, something new in previous releases, the volume icon on the taskbar could be used to select both. Um, in previous releases, the volume icon on the taskbar could be used to select both output and input audio devices. But for this release, this they've actually been split into two separate icons, one for output and one for input for greater control. So if you plug in a, plug in a mic, it shows up and you can adjust its volume or, or mute it. And uh, th this is nice. I'm really happy that they split those up. That, that will That's very, very convenient and useful. And also, there are keyboard shortcuts now to access the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth menus. You hit Control-Alt-B opens the Bluetooth menu, and Control-Alt-W opens the Wi-Fi menu. And once the menu is up, the cursor up and down keys can be used to navigate. And that's really nice if you're running the Raspberry Pi um, headless or, you know, you don't have a mouse connected <laughs> for, for many reasons for when you're uh, doing a project with the Pi. And also in the future, Network Manager will be replacing DHCP CD. But what's nice is you have the option to use Network Manager now. It's it's still in beta, so they said expect some bugs, but it is is pretty much working. And uh, DHCP D is still the default for now, but uh, in the future we're going to have uh, Network Manager as the default, which is you know better for for controlling uh, VPNs and and doing more advanced uh, needs in uh, for networking, so that's going to be very very popular, and people are going to be very happy about that. Well, I mean, it's the <laughs> network manager. Network manager has been in like the Debian repos. Um, if you've been around, yeah, for like, that's, ages. That's just where yeah. it's been. That's the thing. Yeah, so. <laughs> that, that's kind of interesting. Um, Every time we talk about Raspberry Pi at the end of every show, I immediately go to the same spot. This is how my brain works. You're probably like this at home. Like, I need to do with something with the thing because I have, I still, new in box. Okay, it's not new in box. I plugged it in, so it uh, made it boot. It was one of the Raspberry Pi Zero W2s mm. to do a project with. Send in some email if you got an idea for a project for one because I got one just sitting around doing something with that. This is a very well update. 
I'm always yeah. fascinated and reminded because that conversation earlier in the pre-show started with, that's why I want the next gen, because I feel that we're one generation away from Raspberry Pi being able to pull off desktop duty, like real desktop duty. Spare me, because I, I can feel that comment getting ready to <laughs> type. I'm like, you can do it. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've used desktop. I, I, got, I got a Pi 4 8 gig. I played with it on desktop. Don't lie to yourself. It's not a great experience. It's a usable experience. It's better than nothing. It's not yeah, a great true. experience, especially when you load up 1080p WebRTC video and try to tell it to do uh, video capture as a webcam. It's yeah. not, it doesn't. <laughs> but see, I'm getting somewhere. I'd love yeah. to replace these three boxes under the desk that I have for you, Pedro, um, and Jordan. Yeah. With Raspberry Pis. And huh. one strip of duct tape and just duct tape it all to the bottom of the desk. It'd be great. So maybe the next one will be able to do that. But good, always good news. Good to see updates from Raspberry Pi Foundation. Mm -hmm. Jill, do we get any famous last words before we roll Aww. the credits this evening? Well, go out there and make some new penguins. <laughs> Whether that be installing a new distro or working necromancy. on a Raspberry Pi. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't. Rule out necromancy. I want you to resurrect penguins. They're, they'll be new to you. Oh, <laughs> keep those penguins marching, everyone. <laughs> Aw, and thank you to all our wonderful uh, patrons. Yeah, thank you uh, again, PT Dave and Katana Steel and Nubbin for the Twitch subs and. Uh, Pledges. All of our beautiful executive producers. I want to thank each and every one of you. Also, I want to thank Maxis, who just pledged yeah. one dollar. We got an abstraction holding down Team Chicago, doing the things all over Sea Monsters. Like Renown, David, System T, uh -huh. Nubs, hanging in there, hanging out with us on Fridays and Tuesdays, playing the Track Mania, getting at Death Notes, and so many chairlings, I can barely yeah. fit you all on one screen. And thank you, so Don perfect. M, for the 100... Uh, little diamond cheers crystal cheers yes. <laughs> on twitch <laughs> <laughs> all right beautiful people we'll see you next week bye bye love you all <laughs> this is my floofy shirt <laughs> it is a floofy shirt i noticed that's unusual for you to wear a floofy shirt 